All right, hello everyone, welcome back. And today I just wanted to do a preview for Barcelona's game tomorrow against Celta Vigo. And it's an important game in La Liga, but also it's a really important warm up for Barcelona's game against Napoli in the next couple days after this game. And Barcelona need to get some confidence back after that draw against Granada and after a really disappointing performance in that game. So I just wanted to talk about how I think Barcelona will line up and how I think they will do. So here's how the current La Liga table looks. Barcelona are in third place right now and Celta Vigo is in 17th place. But I don't think people should forget that just last week, Barcelona played the 19th place team in La Liga, Granada, and they put up a really disappointing performance. So that La Liga table, it does not mean anything. And Barcelona want to put up a good performance and get a win tomorrow, not just for La Liga standings, but to also get a confidence booster going into that game against Napoli because I just think the team's belief in themselves and their own abilities and Xavi and their teammates overall, it's just down right now. And tomorrow is a really important game because it's the game standing in between Barcelona's game against Napoli in the round of 16 of the Champions League. So it's big to get a confidence booster and put up a good performance tomorrow. And Xavi's going to go into this game with a very strong lineup. He's not going to make rotations because you want all your players to be fit and, and in rhythm going into that game against Napoli. So he's not going to make a bunch of rotations. He's going to put out a really good lineup. And the performance tomorrow, it can't be anything like the one we saw against Granada. And for me, what do I want to be different? Well, I would hope there's much more intensity. The energy levels are higher. It looks like the players are actually enjoying being on the field because that game against Granada, it just looked like a chore for them to be there. And that's that can't work. And like almost every other game for Barcelona in the last couple months, the defense was all over the place. There's no structure there. And that's something that Xavi absolutely has to work on and figure out before Napoli. And also there has to be a better performance from the midfield because with all the quality that you have in that team, when Christensen was playing in the midfield, Frankie de Jong, Pedri, and Gundogan, how are you not controlling and dominating a game against Granada, the 19th place team in the league? That's inexcusable. And Barcelona has to figure out a way to get the best out of their midfield and, and, and complement each other's strengths and work together very well. And for me, I think it's very likely that for the players that start this game tomorrow, I feel like they are more than likely going to be starting in that game against Napoli. So I feel like this is going to be Barcelona's best starting lineup. And so I was just going to go through and talk about who I think will be starting tomorrow. And in goal is Ter Stegen, and it's great to have him back from his injury. And even though he didn't have the best performance in that game against Granada, I just think he was out of rhythm. And obviously, Barcelona are going to continue to be starting him and relying on him because even though he does have his flaws I think he is Barcelona's best option right now so of course he's going to be starting tomorrow and then at right back is going to be Koundé and even though he hasn't been great in the last couple of weeks I don't think many Barcelona players have so I do think he's Barcelona's best option at right back right now and even though Hector Ford I really wouldn't be against him starting I just feel like Koundé is going to be starting at right back in that game against Napoli so again I feel like he'll be starting tomorrow and then the first center back is going to be Araujo unless he's not 100% fit but I'd be really surprised if he doesn't play tomorrow because I just feel like he's going to want to be playing in that game against Napoli. There's no way that he's going to be sitting out in that game unless he has a serious injury. So I think he's going to be starting tomorrow because he wants to be at pace. He wants to be in rhythm of the game. So I don't think he's going to want to miss that game against Napoli. And then the other center back, I think, is going to be Inigo Martinez. Even though Kubarsi has played a lot of minutes and I think he's been really impressive so far, I just think Inigo Martinez and Araujo are going to be the two starting center backs for Barcelona in that game against Napoli. So I don't think Xavi's going to switch it up and say, Kubarsi, you can play this weekend, but then Inigo Martinez, you'll be starting midweek. I just don't think that's going to happen. I think he's going to want to play both of them together in this game. I really wouldn't mind Kubarsi in that position, and I think he's been really impressive, but to start a round of 16 knockout stage game at center back at 17 years old, Kubarsi, even though he's been really impressive, I just don't want to throw him into all that pressure. I think Inigo Martinez and Araujo will be the starting center backs in that game. And then a left back is Jao Cancelo, and I'd be really surprised if he wasn't the starting left back for the rest of this year, because given the fact that Balde is out injured, I think Cancelo in that position, it's the best bet for Barcelona. And even though he had a great pass to Lamini Mall, I think overall his performance in the last game, it wasn't that great. I think he's been a defensive liability for a couple moments this season, and Obviously, against Napoli, you just cannot have that, even though he gives a lot going forward. And I think his pros going forward outweigh his cons defensively. I still think I'm hoping for a better performance from him tomorrow. And then depending on how the game goes, around the 70th, 80th minute, I could see Hector Ford coming in because I think defensively he is better than Cancelo right now. So I would understand Xavi taking Cancelo out, especially if Cancelo is doing a lot of work going forward and then maybe giving him a little bit more rest for that game against Napoli midweek. And then moving into the midfield, I think one of the bigger questions is, is Xavi going to continue to count on Christensen as a defensive midfielder? And I think some people maybe haven't been super impressed with, with Christensen as a defensive midfielder, but I think Xavi will continue to count on him because I think, again, looking forward to that game against Napoli, I don't think Barcelona can go into that game without a defensive midfielder. And I don't think he's been amazing in that position. I think he's been pretty decent for Barcelona so far as a defensive midfielder. But the thing is, I wish Barcelona had more time. And I wish Xavi had experimented with him in that position a little bit earlier, just to give Barcelona more time. Because now it seems like, okay, you've played three games as a defensive midfielder. Are you ready to start in that position against Napoli in a round of 16 of the Champions League knockout stage? But I think it's been very obvious that in big games, the midfield of Frankie Young, Gundogan, and Pedri, it just gets exposed 
with no defensive midfielder because Frankie is just not a defensive midfielder. He's nowhere near a defensive midfielder. He's not good enough defensively. And Gundogan just goes too far forward. Pedri's not a defensive midfielder. It just is not going to work out if they start that game with that midfield three against Napoli. So Christensen, even though he's not doing anything flashy, I think he's been decent for Barcelona so far. Again, I wish Barcelona had experimented with him in that position just to give Barcelona a little bit more time to see how well he does and, and make him more comfortable in that position. But again, I think Christensen tomorrow will start as a defensive midfielder again. And then Frankie de Jong will play beside him. And I'm hoping he has a little bit of a better performance because I just don't think he was super invested in that game. I just didn't see him really doing that much for Barcelona. I think he had a good pass to Cancelo in the first half, but after that, I just didn't see that much from him. And with a, for a player with his talent, I just think we could be expecting more from him. But I think in that game against Napoli, maybe in that game tomorrow, I think he'll do a lot better. And then Gundogan, of course, is a guaranteed starter. He's been one of Barcelona's best players. And coming up to that game against Napoli, 100% he will be starting in that game because he's been one of Barcelona's most important players. And really looking at this season, I don't know where they would be without him sometimes. And I don't think we've seen the best of Pedri recently, but again, I think that's like a lot of Barcelona players. And I think Pedri, if he's playing as an attacking midfielder, I think that's the best option for Barcelona, even though Gundogan is also great going forward. But I think they can alternate and, and choose times to make runs going into the box. And I think Pedri and Gundogan as the attacking midfielders, that's great for Barcelona. And then moving on to the forwards, I think the right wing position is difficult because obviously Lamine Mall has been Barcelona's best player in the past couple months. So he should be guaranteed to start, right? You would think, but... At this point in the season, he is still 16 years old. I don't think he should be getting consistent minutes for Barcelona, no matter how good he's done. And that's why it's important to have a lot of depth in your team. And Rafinha is still a great player, even though a lot of Barcelona fans maybe get frustrated watching him sometimes. I think Rafinha probably will be starting tomorrow. But there have been times when Yamal's not on the field, and it's Rafinha and Lewandowski up top. And I think Barcelona really struggle with creativity, with taking players on, with actually having some excitement for their viewers. And so I could understand that if Barcelona play Rafinha and Lewandowski up top, and I hope that's not the front two that we see against Napoli. But again, I just feel like Xavi might do that tomorrow. And if Jamal isn't starting, I'm sure he's going to get at least 30 minutes in this game tomorrow. And of course, against Napoli, I do think Jamal should be starting though, 100%. Because he has been one of Barcelona's best players. It would be crazy, even if he's just 16 years old, to bench him for Barcelona's most important game this season. And then at striker, of course, it's going to be Lewandowski. I think we've we've tried so hard to see Vitor Roque starting tomorrow. But it's going to be Lewandowski. And I don't even think he's been playing that bad recently. I just think there's no movement from him. I think Barcelona's line just looks so static with him as the number nine. And Vitor Roque, every time he's came on, I think he's made a very good impact for Barcelona, even if he's not scoring goals. But in the past two games, the past two times that he's come on off the bench, he's scored. And it's been a big impact for Barcelona so far. And then the other option would be Lewandowski and Vitor Roque playing off of each other up top. And I don't think that's a bad option. I think when they both are on the field, they look pretty good. But I just think that sacrifices a midfielder. And who of Christensen, Frankie de Jong, Pedri, and Gundogan would you sit in that game? I just, I think it's more likely that Vitor Roque will come off the bench tomorrow. But I think the best lineup right now would be Lamine Yamal and Vitor Roque up top. That would be the best lineup for Barcelona, but I just feel like it might be Rafinha and Lewandowski tomorrow. 99% chance it's Lewandowski starting up top, but then Rafinha and Yamal, you could go either way with that. And if it's Lewandowski and Rafinha up top, I think we should prepare ourselves for a decently boring game. I don't think it's going to be that exciting, but maybe they could prove me wrong. I, I would hope that they would, but I just think Xavi in these big games, he does tend to play it safer. And so I just think in that game against Napoli, I don't think it's going to be Lamine Yamal and Vitor Roque up top, even though I think right now that probably would be Barcelona's best attack. And tomorrow, the most important thing is not three points. I think the most important thing is putting out a good performance and having some confidence and, and letting the players enjoy themselves. Because again, I just think in that game against Granada, it looked like a chore for the players to be there. I mean, they get to just go play football. That's that's what they do with their day. I mean, that, that sounds like a great opportunity, but I feel like the players have just kind of lost that given all the negativity around Xavi and around the team's performances in the past couple weeks. And it doesn't look like Barcelona are going to win La Liga anyway. So the most important thing is not three points tomorrow. It's just putting out a good performance. So there's some belief in the team going into that game against Napoli. And for me, I just hope it's not a super boring game when the midfield just kind of looks out of it. There's no creativity. There's nothing happening. There's nothing exciting going on. And especially if Rafinha and Lewandowski are up top, I just hope that's not the case. And then in the 60th minute, you're hoping that Yamal and Vitor Roque come on and change the game for Barcelona. That right there is just not sustainable. You should be playing every game with your best starting lineup. Even if it's tough to bench some big name players, you have to come into the game with your best lineup. And going into that game against Napoli, can't play favorites. You can just say, who's performing the best? And they should be the one starting for me. But I still have a lot of belief in the team going into that game against Napoli. I'm just hoping after that game against Granada, it was just a wake-up call. Because when you're tying to the 19th place team in the league, and you're making it easy for them, like, the Granada didn't even look that good. No offense to them. I mean, they deserved the draw, but it was Barcelona that 
that made it easy for them, that let them go through their defense every single time. The midfield just wasn't dominant and didn't control the game enough. And that can't happen tomorrow. And then, of course, in that game against Napoli. And it's an important game just to build some confidence, not saying that Celta Vigo is going to be easy. I think Barcelona do struggle against Celta Vigo sometimes, especially with Aspas on the field. So it's not going to be an easy game for Barcelona, but you're hoping it's a confidence booster to put out a good performance. And I hope Barcelona put up a good performance tomorrow. And again, with Yamal and Rafinha, I understand Yamal sitting because... Uh, he's 16 years old. He's been playing so many games for Barcelona because Rafinha got injured. And once Rafinha comes back, I think they should be splitting minutes, even though Yamal is the better player right now. And in that game against Napoli, if I had to choose starting one of them, Lamine Yamal would be starting. And for Vitor Roque, I fully think he deserves a start. And I would love to see him starting tomorrow, but I just don't feel like Xavi is going to take away one of the four midfielders. I think it's more likely that Vitor Roque is going to come on in the 60th minute when Barcelona maybe would be struggling for a goal. And even in those games that Vitor Roque wasn't scoring, he was still providing a lot of movement and making great runs. But then in the past couple games, both times he came on and scored a goal for Barcelona and changed the game and won the game for Barcelona. So again, I really think he deserves a start and I hope it's soon. And I could see Xavi starting with three midfielders and having Lewandowski, Rafinha, and Vitor Roque on the field. I, I don't know how well that would work. I think Lewandowski and Vitor Roque do work pretty well off of each other because Lewandowski doesn't really make runs and Vitor Roque does. I think that maybe works out in Barcelona's favor. And so I, I think we'll see Vitor Roque at some point in the game, but I would really love to see him start, but I would maybe be surprised if he does. And overall, it's not just about this result in La Liga. It's about putting out a good performance and getting back to your full potential because Barcelona have really played nowhere near it this season. And to do well in the Champions League, to get past Napoli, you have to start playing towards your best. And so hopefully tomorrow we see something closer to that. And thank you very much for watching my video. I really do appreciate it. And I hope Barcelona have a good performance tomorrow. And of course, we're all looking forward to that game against Napoli.